man, I've been stuck here in Colorado. Can't believe that, uh, man, it's just so beautiful here and and uh, big, kind of been away from things. No, wait a minute. That's not Colorado. Hey, that's Bakersfield. Whoa, look at all the snow. Can you believe it? Snow? Ha! Colorado's got nothing on us, man. Hey, you keep watching because we got a really good show for you today. Welcome to Just Roll With It. I'm your host, Rick Kopis. And today, I was going to do a video on some history because I really like history. Uh, my channel is all about art and music and history and, and you know, basically anything I really want to talk about. And uh, I had considered doing a show about um, Central Bakersfield, where I grew up. You know, I want to talk about something that I know something about. And, uh, you know, there was a park down off Oleander and Dracaena that I grew up playing at and being a part of called Beale Park. And, uh, and as you saw in the music video kind of run up to this beginning part, um, Oleander Avenue in that area is what I would call Mansion Row. Uh, back in the turn of the 19th century, uh, you know, 1900s, I should say, the early 1900s to 1920, most of that neighborhood was developed. And so some of the richest folks in town built mansions along Oleander Avenue. And uh, Truxton Beale, one of the uh, richest guys around, donated that five acres to Beale, of Beale Park to the city of Bakersfield, as well as the materials and stuff to build the amphitheater and a swimming pool, a couple of swimming pools, uh, a big uh, Olympic sized swimming pool and a kiddie pool that they had for many years in the park. And uh, he donated it to the city. And as well as the clock tower, I think everybody that's in Bakersfield remembers the clock tower that sits at the, uh, at the, um, Museum it used to sit on Chester Avenue and he donated that in memory of his mother and and uh, You know, he was a rich eccentric guy and um, I wanted to talk about that and uh, so I went by to shoot video and uh, My daughter who's uh, my camera person Thank you lemon drop uh, She does video for me and uh, we went by to shoot some location and the city of Bakersfield was cutting all the old trees because of uh, disease and stuff. They were dangerous. So they had a big project going on and that fouled our plans. So a week or so later, after the snow and all the stuff that happened here, uh, I went back to try and do a location shoot. And as I do when I'm by myself, safety is important. And so I typically will get out my cell phone and do a little cell phone video and walk around to see because there was some people in the park and when there's people around and they see you know cameras and you know sound equipment because i do you know i i do full-on videos so I, I usually have a couple of cameras 
uh, I have onboard sound as you can see I got a nice little sound so that things are you know copacetic <laughs> and uh, I go around with my cell phone to just check and see if I may be accosted because that's happened in the past and so uh, you know there was a homeless person living in a in a barbecue area just you know outside of the amphitheater and then as I walked around there was another homeless person camped out behind the amphitheater and uh, typically the homeless people don't give me any problems but there were some other people and uh, that are just curious and um, can be a thing and sure enough uh, someone walked up and asked me what I was doing and then continued to talk to me for 20 minutes and made it impossible for me to uh, you know get my gear out and actually try to get some production done in the time frame that I had so I got really really kind of depressed about it because um, I have these memories of the park and of you know the the city band playing and families and football and all these all these ideas and thoughts uh, of you know the history of me in that park and I thought man what a mess what a mess the park is in what a mess the neighborhood is in and uh, it took me a few days of of uh, thinking and and actually producing another video that I decided to revisit this video because one of the reasons I really like history it's because it's a matter of perspective. <laughs> so this video is going to be about perspective. Yeah, Beal Park was donated by a guy named Truxton Beal and his family, who happened to own Tohon Ranch, one of the richest people around. Uh, you know, if you, you you guys know Tohon Ranch, it's huge, and uh, he inherited Tohon Ranch from his father, and uh, you know, I, I I'm not sure they worked here, but um, his wife Mary was from San Francisco and they really I'm not sh I, I was trying to research where they lived in Bakersfield uh, I'm not really certain that they ever did as much as they worked here and had interests here um, they donated the first library on the corner of 17th and Chester uh, commemorating his father General Beal which you know we have General Beal Road named after his father uh, and you know um, he lived back east I mean they f they founded the Decatur Hotel in Washington DC which is still a super famous uh, thing he's buried in in uh, Virginia and you know they were very political so he was a you know he was a big muckety muck in politics and so uh, I never could really find out where he actually lived in Bakersfield but I know that he cared a lot about Bakersfield um, they in fact uh, named Truxton Avenue after him and his family uh, to honor him for donating the clock tower the library and the park all pretty close to the same uh, you know era in the early 1900s and 1910 uh, 1909 uh, those kinds of things and it was so I look at it and I think of the perspective when I think of history um, when I was young I thought of history as a bunch of boring dates a bunch of boring people that were old and unimportant to me because as a young person I think I'm the smartest this is the best generation ever because old people don't understand and I had this perspective of a young person and I remember going back to Beale Park in my memory and, and remembering just how much fun it was to be at Beale Park and the pick up baseball games and the pick up basketball games and the music that was happening in the park and volleyball and families and Sunday barbecues and all this stuff. And I remember as a young musician playing music in the park and the police showing up at least every few days someone would call the police and I thought how rude call the police 
You know, I'm here trying to have some fun with my friends. And the neighbors didn't appreciate it. And I started thinking during the meditation and time to make this video that, wow, I'm looking at the park now thinking, gosh, the park has gone to hell in a handbasket. And when I was young, it was perfect. And when I was young, the neighbors were calling the police on us young people because they felt like, look at the park, it's gone to hell in a handbasket. And I think, it must be perspective. And so I wanted to do a video about perspective because perspective is important. That's what history is about. Teach us a different perspective. To think about how life used to be so that it would project us into a perspective of what life could be if we learned some things from our past. Because if you don't know where you've been, it's hard to see where you're going. And it's easy to get lost. And I was lost for a long time because I didn't understand perspective. And art has taught me that because perspective is everywhere in it. I mean, I'm shooting this video straight on right here, me up against my guitars. But I also have a perspective of me along the wall with my guitars. And it's a totally different perspective. And it's interesting. It's not better. It's not worse. It's just different. And that's what art teaches me. And it's what he, uh, history teaches me, is that perspective is neither good nor bad. It just is. And so perspective, it's really important. I learned it in art. And then it transferred to history. And pretty soon, I really enjoy history because it's teaching me a different perspective. I mean, I'm shooting this video straight on up against me and these guitars on the wall. But I'm also shooting it along the side of the wall to give me a different perspective. Why it isn't better, it's just different. It isn't better, it's just different. And that's what history and art teaches us. So perspective is everywhere. When I'm writing a song, I try to write a song with a certain perspective. If I'm not thinking and putting myself in the middle of the story, see, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to take you on a, on a journey in my songs. That's what songwriters do. We, we have to generate a reality. And so I have to have a perspective. But when I'm writing, I like to leave my perspectives just a little bit open just a little bit so that you, the listener, or the watcher of this video, see, I'm speaking to you this way, but you're hearing it this way. And they're two different perspectives. It's kind of trippy, isn't it, when you think about it? You bring your baggage with you when I'm playing a song for you. And if you generate a thought, a feeling, a smell, a place, I can tell you most of you can remember when you hear a song that really touched you, you can remember where you were, you can remember what it smelled like, maybe what it tastes like, maybe you were eating something, maybe you were chewing on some gum, maybe you were with your special friend or something, but it generates a memory and a perspective and you enter into the story. And with my open-endedness, it becomes yours. And I love that about art. And that's what history is about. So when I talk about going to Beale Park and it developing and being a place for peace and freedom and, and a, a really beautiful memory for me, um, it also has a perspective of neighbors who thought, gosh, this place is, you know, these kids, they're running amok, they're smoking cigarettes and other things, and they're making a mess of this park. It used to be a beautiful place. But I remember when I was a child talking to some of the older folks in the neighborhood, and they said when the park, because they were older and they were there pretty close to when the park was built, and they said people used to spend the night in the park. And it was okay. 
it was pre air conditioning and so when it got hot which it does here people would sleep outside and they would sleep at the park and it reminded me of the people sleeping in the park today I know it's not the same but it is a perspective that I hadn't thought of and it helped me move past my depressed feeling of the conditions that things are in to remember that no matter when we are we're in a human condition and things happen and I get to tell stories about it and I get to write songs about it and I get to live through it and so do you so I, I hope that uh, my meanderings about perspective uh, would bring something to your mind I mean when you're looking at paintings my daughter's a wonderful painter and my wife is a wonderful painter and I've got friends who are wonderful painters and my sister was a wonderful painter and and they paint from a perspective and you see it from a perspective and so it's everywhere and it's something to bring hope and joy and peace and tell you something maybe about yourself so keep coming back i'm going to bring way more cool videos and it's going to be even better than you can believe <laughs> and i can believe quite a bit so here we go please like and subscribe to my channel smash any of these buttons you see make a comment and maybe watch one of these videos that youtube thinks you might like come on just roll with it.